Welcome ladies and gentlemen, my name is Brian McLogan and in this video, I'm going to show you how to determine the reference angle. Now, this is something that is actually very important to me, especially when I'm deal helping students understand how to find angles in the unit circle because one of the things I hate the most is seeing students try to memorize the unit circle and not understand how to use the reference angle to help you evaluate um, trigonometric expressions or at least understand where the point or the angle is on the unit circle. So. There's, I'm gonna, the way I'm gonna work through this is I have, let's see, um, 10 angles that I'm gonna go ahead and work through. Um, show you how to determine the reference angle for. And, but before I do that, I just wanna kinda go through a little bit of a um, general overview. So therefore, therefore, if you're just kind of just starting out, um, you'll have an idea about the reference angle and then how to find it. So basically, to understand the reference angle though, we need to understand an angle in standard form. All right, so remember in standard form, we're gonna have our initial side is going to be the positive side of the x-axis. And then obviously we're gonna be rotating counterclockwise and therefore we'll have our terminal side. Now that is going to be an angle, a lot of times we're gonna use theta, okay? Now what's important is the reference angle, the definition of the reference angle is the positive acute angle between the terminal side and the x-axis. So you can see in this example, the reference angle is actually the angle. Now we use the reference angle as theta prime. Okay, so that's the notation for the reference angle, which is theta prime. Well, in this example, when you have an angle that's in the first quadrant, theta prime is equal to theta. Basically, again, we're asking ourselves, how far away is this angle away from the x-axis? And really, that's what you're asking yourself every single time. How far away is the angle or the terminal side away from the x-axis? Now, it's important though for us to understand like, you know, if we have something here in the, you know, second quadrant, again, we always start from the positive terminal side, right? So here we have a new angle, right? But again, the reference angle is gonna be this distance away from the x-axis right here, oops, okay? And it's very important to understand that we're not shaking, you're not, we're going from like the x-axis to the terminal side, we're not doing a negative angle. The, the reference angle is always positive and it's always acute. That means it has to be less than 90 degrees. So if we have a 90 degree angle, there is no reference angle. All right, so it has to be acute. That means it has to be between zero and 90, but it cannot be zero and it cannot be 90 degrees. So there would be our theta prime right there. Um, and we could also do, if we had an angle down here, then theta prime is right there. And if we had an angle all the way around in the fourth quadrant, then that would be your theta prime. So again, your theta prime is basically that reference angle is again that measurement from the terminal side to the x-axis. Now there is some math to go ahead and you know define this for whatever your angle is, whichever quadrant it's in. But you know I don't really think that is as important because um, I think it's difficult for students to memorize you know these rules as far as you know 360 minus theta or theta theta minus 180. Like I think it's difficult to remember that. So my advice that I work in with my students when we're covering this in class is to first, you need to understand the angle of the graph. So the first four examples, you know, I have um, angles in degree form, and then I, I think I only did one in radians, wow, all right. And then I also have one angle in radian form, which we'll kind of work through. But this is the old worksheet that I had, so I figured I'd kind of go through it. All right, so if we were gonna graph 210 degrees, all right, now again, we know that halfway around a circle, right, is 180 degrees, all the way around a circle, right, is 360 degrees. Doo -doo. So 210 degrees is going to be 30 degrees over 180, right? Wouldn't you agree? That's gonna be 30 degrees extra. So that means that distance from there to there is going to be 30 degrees. So what we can say is theta prime, which represents the reference angle, is going to equal 30 degrees. And that's exactly what we're looking for, right? Because from there to there, is 210 degrees, then we're going 30 degrees over the um, 180. So same thing for 240 degrees. We know that's gonna be all the way there. Now we know that between 180 and 360, if we add, like from here to here is 90, right? So therefore that would be 270. So 240 is going to be 60 degrees 
above the 180 or 30 degrees short of 270. But either way, you know, if we can recognize that to be 60 degrees, that's going to be our theta prime. So therefore, we can say that theta prime is going to equal 100 and, oops, I'm sorry, is going to be 60 degrees because it's 60 degrees away from the x-axis, okay? You're not measuring how far it is over here because over there it'd be, what, 90, so it'd be 120. But again, remember the definition of reference angle is it has to be acute, that means less than 90 degrees, greater than zero, and between the terminal side and the x-axis, and it's going to be positive. So even though you could say, well, you're going clockwise in this direction, again, we're not measuring direction for the reference angle. It's just the basically the absolute measurement um, between the terminal side and the x-axis. Um, all right, so now we have 300 degrees. So if all the way around is 360, three quarters of the way around is 270, then 300 is going to be you know somewhere right on there. And we say, well, if all the way around is 360 and we only went to 300, that means this measurement, theta prime, has to be 60 degrees, right? You're 60 degrees short of a revolution. So theta prime is equal to 60 degrees, okay? Um, and again, doesn't measure, doesn't matter the measurement. You're just basically measuring that distance. Um, now we have another one for 330, and hopefully you can start like doing these kind of like in your head and realizing, oh, we're 30 degrees now short, right? So therefore, theta prime equals 30 degrees. Now we kind of have an interesting one here at 180 because 180 is halfway around a circle. Well, again, therefore the angle, remember the definition of the angle is between the terminal side, which is at the x-axis and the x-axis. So there is no angle, right? There's literally, it lands on the x-axis. Um, and again, it has to be, if you follow the definition of acute, it has to be greater than zero and less than 180. So therefore, in this case, there is no reference angle. I ought to say no theta prime. Um, I wish I would have done, is this a math way? Yeah, I wish I would have done some more, um, Pi over six, and actually, you know what I'm gonna do? I'm actually gonna add onto this, uh, add onto this video. I'm gonna choose a couple more videos or a couple more problems, just so you guys can kind of see what we're doing here. So pi over six, um, if we recognize this, we know that halfway around a circle, right, is pi, so that is six pi over six. So pi over six is just one of them, so we recognize that's in the first quadrant. So theta prime is equal to pi over six. The nice thing about having angles in the first quadrant is they're equal to the reference angle. So if you know this angle is between is within the first quadrant, then that's gonna be the reference angle, okay? Um, 360 is basically an angle going all the way around, um, which again, we can recognize is not going to have a reference angle because it's gonna again, gonna lie on the x-axis. So no theta prime. Uh, 90 degrees here. Uh, 90 degrees is again on the y-axis, right? Choo, choo, choo. Which again, doesn't follow the definition of an acute angle because no matter where you go to the x-axis, to the left or to the right, it's gonna be 90 degrees. And for an angle to be acute, it has to be less than 90 degrees, right? A 90 degree angle is a right angle. So therefore it doesn't follow the definition. Um, so we can say no reference angle. Uh, 60 degrees is in the first quadrant. So choo, choo, choo. we'll just go ahead and graph 60 degrees there. Um, and since it's in the first quadrant, I'm just gonna say theta prime is equal to 60 degrees because if I just go backwards, I know I traveled 60 degrees back to the x-axis. Um, 120 degrees is in the second quadrant, which I think is my first one in the second quadrant, which is kind of amazing. Um, so 120 degrees here in the second quadrant um, is going to have a reference angle. Well, how far do I need to go? If I'm at 120 and I know halfway around a circle, it's 180 degrees, how far do I need to go? Like, what is this distance? And, you know, there's formulas to like memorize, but I'd say, you know, it's 60 degrees, you're good to go. Um, let's go and do work on some other ones. Let's do 12, 13, 14. Oh, wait, why am I doing 12? Why don't we do up to 16? So what I'll do is I'll do, I'll do 16 of them. Okay, so let's do 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, and then 16. All right, so we're gonna do these all in radian form. So um, let's go ahead and do you know, pi over three. No, I'm sorry, let's do two pi over three. Let's do a negative three pi halves. Let's do a 
negative um, 5 pi over 6. And then let's do a negative, um, let's do a negative, let's see, I haven't done anything in the 4s. So let's do a 7 pi over 4. All right, so we get some negatives in there, some more radians, get you guys a little bit more comfortable um, with that inverse. Actually, you know, let's just do a positive three pi graphs. Keep things kind of simple. Okay, um, so the next one. So again, I wanted to kind of cover some negative angles in my original, uh, you know, worksheet. It didn't really cover that, so I wanted to make sure we had some of those. Oh, I still got some more. What am I doing? Um, all right, let's do another positive one. Let's just do... Um, Let's do 7 pi over 3. And then let's do a negative pi over 3 or 6. Let's do a negative pi over 3. Yeah, that'll be perfect. OK, so let's just keep with that. I think that will be good for us to kind of work from. All right, so the first one, 2 pi over 3. Um, again, we just need to basically know the angle. So again, halfway around a circle is 3 pi over three. So if you were to break that up into thirds, it would look something like that, right? You don't really need this here, the y-axis. So two of them is going to be over here. And you could say, well, all right, so I went to two parts. Halfway around circle is three parts. So how far is this reference angle? Well, you can just say it's theta equals pi over three. Over here, we're dealing in halves. So this is one half, two halves, right? So that's two pi over two. So therefore, this is going to be three pi over two, as all the way around would be four pi over two, which would be two pi, um, which again, we know that though that's gonna create a 90 degree angle, so therefore there is no reference angle. Now, the important thing about negative angles is a lot of people get confused because they're like, oh, shouldn't the reference angle be negative? But again, we're not looking for, um, we're looking for that absolute distance from the terminal side to the x axis. So if I'm gonna go ahead and graph negative five pi over six, all right, that means I'm now gonna go in actually clockwise direction. Instead of going in the counterclockwise, I'm going in counterclockwise direction. I know all the way around this circle is going to be at six pi over six. We're just changing the direction, right? So if I start with thirds, and then now I can break them down into six, and now we're just gonna go, you can see this is six parts, six pi over six. So I'm gonna to go to five pi over six, and you can see that how far am I away from the x-axis? Well, again, that positive value is pi over six. Um, to go ahead and do 7 pi over 4, we're just going to continue down in that direction. So therefore, that is 4 pi over 4, which makes sense for pi. All the way around the circle would be 8 pi over 4. Um, t -t 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 4 pi over 4. So if I'm going to 7 of them, you can see I'm back in the first quadrant. But again, like it's not the same, right? You can see that I'm obviously only going to be pi over 4 away. So theta prime equals pi over 4. Uh, moving on to the next example is 7 pi over 3. Now this one's kind of interesting because if I go all the way around the circle, we know halfway around the circle is 3 pi over 3. All the way around the circle is going to be 6 pi over 3. So I'm at an extra pi over 3 over, right? So I'm going all the way around to 6 pi and then I'm going extra pi over 3. Well again, what is this distance? That's what I'm looking for is that distance away from the x-axis. And even though I can go as many revolutions as I want to, but once we stop, we want to know how far are you away from the x-axis. So therefore, theta prime is equal to pi over 3. And last but not least here is negative pi over 3, um, which is, again, just going to be in the negative direction, only pi over 3 over. But since I traveled less than you know a quadrant over, you can see that I only need to travel pi over 3 backwards to get back to where I am. So again, we're just looking for that distance and theta prime is going to equal to pi over 3. So again, reference angles or identifying the reference angles is something I use to help my students evaluate the trigonometric functions. You know, just understanding the reference angle is not as much as useful as it is to being able to help us to evaluate our trigonometric expressions, which I will have um, another video on shortly to help you out with that. So hope you enjoy. See you on the next video. Cheers.